Tis the season to be jolly, or so they say. Uh, Black Friday supply chain uh, may not be stocking stuff, may not be gifts underneath the tree. Teslin, is this a time to celebrate or to mourn? Well, I think, you know, that depends on exactly uh, who you're talking about. You know, there are various class levels, particularly when we talk about even in the black uh, community, you have those who are in poverty, the barely middle class, uh, and the poor, and those who are rich. So uh, there's still a lot of our uh, friends and colleagues and people that we know in our communities that will not be celebrating, that are still trying to figure out uh, how to put a Christmas dinner on the table. And so uh, for those of us who may be doing well with a conscious, uh, we cannot forget about the least of these. And so until uh, everyone, and I won't say everyone, I'm being very broad, but until the majority of us uh, have gotten uh, out from under uh, this economy and how it's crushing folks in particular in, in a lot of different states, uh, there's still much uh, that's needed to be done. Uh, and so we have to be very cautious in our celebratory moments that we are considering uh, what we call the least of these. Atiba, it seems to me that missing from this is the black perspective historically, which is that if anybody understands that sacrifice sometimes means you have to continue to sacrifice, it should be black America. And yet it almost it was after the ink was dry on July 4th and the numbers started to go down that people started to complain about supply chain problems and the price of gas. Did anybody believe that we were going to come out of a pandemic in which the entire U.S. economy was shut down for 18 months without some, um, some hiccups or, or along the way? Or is that oversimplifying things? Yeah, you know, call me incorrect on this, but I think that there is so much attention that's been focused on the supply chain um, and not enough attention focused on the need to get money into people's pockets. And so, yes, the supply chain is an issue but at the same time, even as we like now approach and right now with, with Black Queer, right at Black Friday, we're looking at Christmas, we're also still putting profits before people because that really essentially is why so many people complain about um, quarantine, about how that was going to affect businesses, about um, people losing their jobs. And so where we are right now, um, you know, I think within the African-American community, we long have had a history of having to sacrifice. Um, so that's nothing new. And now the rest of the country is having to face that dilemma. And so we hear this conversation, as you said, after July 4th, it started to come up, but it started to come up also when businesses started recognizing that with the supply chain meant a loss of profit. Um, a lot of people may seem to be or will be unhappy, but how many times have people, particularly African-Americans, gone to the store on Black Friday and tried to get an item that they weren't either able to afford or that was not in stock. So I don't think that's gonna necessarily be something new for African-Americans, but for the rest of the country, it will be a wake-up call. Quentin, we were talking in the commercial break, and, and I was fascinated at your response. You were a waiter. Would you explain to official Washington why it is impossible to go back to work in a restaurant again if you depended on waiting tables to, to make your living, not because the restaurant doesn't open up, but because the customer base may not come back? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was extremely difficult then, about 10 years ago when I was in college being a waiter, uh, just making enough wage to survive. Now, obviously, I was in college, so I might not have been making the best moves with my money. But now, in particular, where people are still, even with the vaccine, uh, still very hesitant about going to uh, in-dining restaurants, uh, still very hesitant about being in large gatherings, it's difficult because a waiter survives on their tips. And not only do they do that, they have to tip share in a lot of restaurants. So I may, or the waiter may make some money on one table, but then you have to give something to the bar, you give something to the person who assisted in, in cleaning the table. And so you're always profit sharing in this type of environment. And so it is it is an untenable situation. And especially if you are in a city where housing is astronomically high. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not the same anymore. And Washington uh, definitely needs to look at those people and factor in their plight and their struggle in trying to make an honest living and not only increase the minimum wage, but also do something about fair housing as well to make it tenable for those that work in that industry to live and thrive. Teslin, you know who is complaining about this conversation right now? President Biden. He's saying, I gave you that bipartisan infrastructure bill. Uh, we're building back better. Uh, there's $1.2 trillion on the table. What's wrong with that? 
Well, here on Black News Channel, we like to focus on black folks. And one thing that is wrong with it, and it's not even, I don't even want to say right or wrong, but just simple facts. 96% of black businesses are, are sole proprietorships. So when Quentin was talking earlier about how black people are not feeling a direct impact from infrastructure, well, the reason why is because black businesses uh, oftentimes do not qualify uh, for a lot of these large uh, projects like infrastructure to be the prime. Uh, they are often the sub, if even that. And there's a lot of programs, citywide programs, county and federal, that do not require a minority business participation. And when they do, those offices do not have any accountability to make sure that that those vendors are being uh, contracted, uh, that they're allowed opportunities for uh, apprenticeships to learn from larger organizations, and uh, they don't pay those businesses on time. I did a lot of government contracting in Orlando, Florida, and I remember waiting two years, yes, two years to be paid on a contract. So when we talk about, well, you know, they're not feeling it. Well, let's ask why. Let's talk about how is it that black businesses will get an opportunity to participate. And Representative Cori Bush brought this up very clearly and blatant when she said that black people were not at the table. She represents a district that is majority black. And she said that they were not at the table to have the negotiation, to have the conversation about infrastructure. We truly were left out of this uh, conversation. So it's hard for me to celebrate uh, when I know that my community may not be directly impacted and yes there will be job opportunities I'm not minimizing that but I'm also a very much pro-black business there's a difference between uh, uh, wealth and and greed such as a, a Elon Musk versus a black business entrepreneur that is simply trying to be in business to employ themselves, take care of them, their families and their community. There is nothing to me more powerful than the black business. I had an opportunity to hire 300 black folks, everyone from GEDs to PhDs, people straight out of jail to people just trying to make it from check to check. And it was the most powerful experience that I ever had, but not having access to those contracts uh, made a difference. It is the best of times, it is the worst of times, it will probably be our winner of discontent.